It's an absolute crazy evolution watching how uh, the company has sort of expanded over the last 20 years. And uh, speaking of a crazy evolution, especially the venues you guys have used going from, um, you know, Cyril Jackson to Claremont now. Uh, take us back to sort of the first home you guys, would somewhere or a venue you guys would properly call home for the first time, uh, being the Wanneroo Showgrounds. What are your favourite memories from that venue? Oh, God. They're, they're probably... That, that venue is probably most of my favourite memories of those early days that just... Um, the, we use, also used the Wanneroo Community Centre, which is where we held Awakening, which was just across the road from there as well. Yep. Um, so we did use that for a period of time. And then it felt like we were consistently getting, uh, we were consistently getting sort of right on the boundary of what would be considered the capacity of the venue. So um, I think at first we were sort of getting 200 and then 250 and then 300. And then we were oh. starting to breach we were starting to breach 300, 350 fairly regularly. Um, so then we, we try to, um, we try to look for a slightly bigger premises and the Wanneroo showgrounds was just perfect for those early days that it was, it was gritty and grimy and dirty. And um, it was a, you know, in, a, in reality, it's a shed. Um, it's a shed in the middle of an oval that it, it allowed this, segregation of the fans and the audience but from backstage you could still feel the energy coming off the crowd um nowadays at gate one which is such a beautiful venue for wrestling but you lose that energy from backstage trying to watch the match uh just the curtains are kind of made to deaden sound um because it's a it's a music venue um so you don't you don't quite get that same feeling but just at the beginning of a show you would just hear that crowd go up and uh, that, that energy would just pump you up so much for whenever you had to go out there. Um, you know, God, that, that venue being full, I mean, beyond full, I mean, you know, Ill illegally full, like squeeze them <laughs> in with a shoehorn, get them in there however you can. 500 people on that uh, night in 2003, it would have been. Um, I, I just, I, <laughs> I don't, I, I remember so clear. I have so many clear memories of this thing that happened 17 years ago. You know, I, if my wife asked me a question, I walk into the next room to go get something for her. I've got to walk back out there and ask her what she said again, because I've already <laughs> forgotten, but I've got these memories just burnt into my head. Um, doing the Ironman match with Jag there. Um, doing the, uh, doing the six man street fight, which just, um, even today, so many of those things are so clear to me. I remember, I remember getting into the ring and looking out because, you know, the place just continued to swell throughout the night. So I think, you know, when we opened doors, we might've been at 420 or whatever. And then by the time we get to the main event, there's 500 people in there. And I have no idea how we got them in there. Um, but there were legitimately 500 people in there. And, you know, we knew that this brawl was going to go all over the building. So you kind of, trying to work out, well, where the hell are we even going to get out uh, into the fans? Walking out uh, with Jimmy and Nate and then getting in the ring. And I remember it must have been, uh, it must have been Wally, Drake Wallace, the two of us squaring off in the middle of the ring and we're both jawing at each, at each other. And he just looks around and he goes, this is fucking chaos, man. And you just looked around, you know, a, a two year build to this, to the end of this storyline and just, um, you know, for a bunch of kids uh, whacking this story together of, of this evil group of teenagers <laughs> who've taken <laughs> over a wrestling company, but to be able to be able to get people invested enough that they, they cared that much, you know, they came there that night to see those guys lose, love them or hate them. And plenty of people loved them. Everyone came there that night to see them lose. And, um, I remember brawling out to the crowd with Mikey and we just, you couldn't find a safe space to move into where there weren't people. Um, it was just unbelievable. Just really, really pure emotion. And, and definitely, you know, after that, we struggled a little bit maybe for the next 12 to 18 months. And I wouldn't say that we struggled in ring, in ring continued to climb. Um, but just trying to find something. I, th I think that storyline of the uprising hooked people that came to those early shows. Um, but then we got them to the payoff and then we got them to the payoff. And I think a lot of people kind of thought, well, I don't, 
I don't necessarily love wrestling, um, but I wanted to see this ride out. I got hooked on this ride and I want to ride it until it's done. And then when it was done, uh, you know, your regulars still came, your hardcore still came, but that those extra people that we were drawing along and, and particularly in those early days, I think you, you have a lot of friends and family who come and support and they come once and then they go, Oh, cool. That, that storyline's pretty cool. I want to come back and see how that all finishes up. So there was, there was a little bit of a 2004, I think creatively was a little bit of a dead spot that just, we didn't have that same, uh, that same energy that kind of carried us through those early days where, where people are just, they're so invested in seeing you as a company do well too, because you know, in some way or another, they're either there as wrestling fans or they're there as your friends um, in those early days. So they're, they're so invested in seeing the company do well that they want to be there um, and see us achieve these small little milestones. But yeah, the, the showgrounds is just, it was the perfect venue for the perfect time. And I feel like, we were probably ready for the move up to the Venville Rec Center when we did move. Um, but if we had gone there earlier, I don't think we would have been that those, those two or three years in the showgrounds really helped us grow and develop to a point where we would be ready for a bigger, nicer venue. I, I have to chime in here and just say, I, I was at several of those shows in that venue and I have to say the atmosphere, I, I can't compare it to anything else that I've ever experienced when I've been to a wrestling show. That was the best <laughs> atmosphere that I'd ever been a part of as a fan. Yep. Amazing. I never got to experience it. I was way too young, but I've, <laughs> I have, uh, how, I have, how old, how old were you? Legitimately? 2003. 2003. I would have been six years old that year. Oh so. my God. <laughs> um, 